Imagine looking up into the clear night sky and you see an object hurtling toward Earth, bringing with it an impact that would destroy civilization as we know it. What would we do? Could we stop it in time? This isn't just idle speculation or the plotline for a sci-fi movie. It happened to the dinosaurs, and it could happen to us too. Late last year, scientists discovered an asteroid called 2024 YR4, and they quickly determined that this rock had the highest percent chance of colliding with the Earth ever calculated. And while updated calculations have reduced the odds significantly, we are not out of the woods yet. What if we could rewrite that apocalyptic fate? Well, that's exactly what NASA is trying to do. You have probably heard of the asteroid belt, situated between Mars and Jupiter. As the solar system formed, this collection of rocks was caught up in a cosmic tug of war between the Sun and Jupiter, with a little help from Saturn as well. The dust and rock there never had a chance to fuse into a real planet. Even if it did, it wouldn't be that impressive. All of the matter of the asteroid belt combined would only create a dwarf planet one quarter the size of our moon. Asteroids are leftovers from the early solar system. Understanding these celestial bodies is not just crucial for keeping humans safe, they could also hold valuable resources that could boost our economy. They are a true cosmic time capsule, perhaps offering a window into the origins of life itself. Asteroids come in all sizes, but most are tiny, just a few meters across. They are so small, they're not even visible with the most advanced telescopes. At the other end of the scale is Ceres, the largest asteroid in the belt, stretching a colossal 1,000 kilometers in diameter, so immense that it's classified as a dwarf planet. This rock makes up one-third of all mass in the asteroid belt. Asteroids are divided into three main categories based on their composition. The majority, about 75%, are called C-types, rich in carbon and resembling cosmic coal mines. Around 20% are S-types, chunks of stone laced with iron and other metals. Then we have the rare M-types. They are celestial treasure chests of metallic iron, nickel, and even precious metals like gold and platinum. Could these space rocks fuel the next leap in human exploration or revolutionize our economy in ways we've never imagined? Think of the solar system as a giant neighborhood with most asteroids staying in their own yards, but sometimes one of these space rocks roams beyond its borders and occasionally something truly incredible appears. Take Oumuamua for instance. It was unlike anything we'd ever seen before. This asteroid-like object wasn't just visiting from another yard, it came from far beyond our solar system, a true interstellar traveler. Its brief appearance in 2017 sparked endless questions. Was it a peculiar asteroid, a frozen shard of distant comet? Some even wondered if it was a probe from an alien civilization. We may never know, but its fleeting visit opened our imaginations to possibilities far beyond our own cosmic backyard. Other times, though, asteroids pose a very real threat much closer to home. Not all of them are harmless neighbors. When these space rocks approach Earth, we classify them as NEOs, or near-Earth objects. Among the most infamous was Chicxulub, a colossal NEO about 10 kilometers across, the size of a city, and it's widely believed to have caused the extinction of the dinosaurs 66 million years ago with the force of millions of nuclear bombs. That's why we were concerned about asteroid 2024 YR4. If it hit us, this Type S asteroid measuring between 40 and 90 meters across wouldn't be the end of the human race, but its impact would flatten a city the size of Albuquerque, New Mexico. The devastation would be incalculable, and that left us with the question, will humanity be ready when the next threat emerges? NASA's quest to unlock the secrets of the asteroid began with a groundbreaking experiment, one that would redefine our approach to these cosmic wanderers. In 1996, the space agency launched their first asteroid probe called the Near-Earth Asteroid Rendezvous, or NEAR, and christened it Shoemaker after Gene Shoemaker, a famous planetary scientist. Its target was the asteroid Eros, about three times the size of Chicxulub. NASA's original plan wasn't to land there, but simply to make observations. 
When the probe arrived in February of 2000, it went into orbit around Eros and used its onboard instruments to begin measuring the rock. Near Shoemaker confirmed that Eros was an S-type asteroid. It took pictures of its surface, it measured its mass and density, and discovered it had no magnetic field whatsoever. After spending a year in orbit around Eros, NASA took a daring leap forward. They executed a series of carefully planned descent maneuvers to take Near Shoemaker down to the surface. Amazingly, on February 12, 2001, the probe touched down on the surface and successfully transmitted data back to Earth for several weeks. The landing maneuver had to be extremely precise because the gravity there is so low. If you hitched a ride on that probe and stepped onto the surface of Eros, you'd have to be very careful just to stay there. It's so small that if you jumped as hard as you could, you'd probably hit escape velocity and go flying off into space. It would be like a rocky trampoline in the middle of the solar system. Many asteroids are thought to be loose collections of rubble held together by the gentle pull of gravity. Eros, however, stands apart. Near Shoemaker revealed that Eros is a solid body pockmarked with impact craters hinting at a dramatic history. Even more intriguing was the layer of dust coating its surface, surprisingly thick in certain areas, which only deepened NASA's curiosity. It sparked a bold question. Could we send a probe to an asteroid, collect material, and bring it back to Earth? That question became a reality with a probe called OSIRIS-REx, a mission that turned science fiction into science fact. OSIRIS-REx was launched in 2016, its target, a C-type asteroid named Bennu. Much smaller than Eros, only 500 meters in diameter, and unlike Eros, it's more of a big pile of rubble than a solid rock. OSIRIS-REx arrived there in 2018 and spent the next two years in orbit, taking measurements in order to decide the best place to acquire samples. Then, in 2020, the spacecraft descended to the surface. It used an instrument called TAGSAM, which stands for Touch and Go Sample Acquisition Mechanism to collect its sample. It touched down for about six seconds and used a burst of nitrogen gas to stir up the regolith for collection. All told, it acquired about 120 grams of material. Then, like a giant pogo stick, it bounced off back into space. The samples were placed in a special canister called the sample return capsule. The SRC was sealed inside an aerodynamic shell, and the outer portion was coated with an ablative heat shield to survive its fiery re-entry through our atmosphere. OSIRIS-REx remained in orbit around Bennu for a few more months so NASA could prepare the SRC for its journey back to Earth. Once they determined everything was in order, about seven months after the TAGSAM set down, the SRC headed back home. It took almost two years for the collected material to re-enter Earth's atmosphere, and it landed in the West Desert of Utah in 2023. Scientists are still studying the material returned, but so far, they have found all five of the key ingredients that can form DNA and RNA used to transmit genetic messages. The sample also contained water, water-soluble phosphates, and 14 of the 20 amino acids used to make proteins by life on Earth. And OSIRIS-REx isn't done yet. It's been renamed OSIRIS-APEX and is now on its way to study the asteroid Apophis. Its new target could still present plenty of surprises. Although we won't get any samples from Apophis, the instruments aboard the probe will still provide valuable information about that smaller asteroid. While it's fascinating to study asteroids like Bennu or Apophis, having one come for an unplanned visit would be catastrophic. It might not mean the end of the human species, but it could end civilization as we know it. That's not a chance we want to take, especially NASA. To prepare for such a scenario, NASA created DART, the Double Asteroid Redirection Test. The idea is simple enough. If an asteroid was headed straight for us, if it was far enough away and we could deflect it, just a little nudge, that might be enough to avoid collision with the Earth. DART proved it wasn't just a theory, but a reality. DART was launched in November 2021 aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Its target was a twin asteroid system consisting of a larger asteroid called Didymos and its smaller moonlet, Dimorphos. The DART spacecraft consisted of an optical navigation system, solar arrays, a CubeSat for making observations, and an impactor which was also called DART. The spacecraft was designed to gather up as much speed as possible and ram directly into Dimorphos. In September 2022, the DART spacecraft smashed into the asteroid 
at 24,000 km per hour. The impact was so powerful that it changed Dimorphos's orbit around Didymos and shaved 33 minutes off its orbital time. With this success, DART proved that planetary defense isn't just an idea, it's a viable solution for protecting Earth. With enough time, humanity has proven it can change the trajectory of asteroids, potentially saving the planet. But in order to deflect an asteroid, we have to be able to detect it first. Recently, the James Webb Telescope turned its gaze on 2024 YR4. Webb was able to tell us that even though YR4 is even less likely to hit the Earth, NASA now estimates it actually has a 4% chance of striking our moon. NASA plans to launch the NEO Surveyor no earlier than 2027, and this space telescope will vastly improve our ability to detect and catalog smaller asteroids, many of which are currently too small to be seen by ground-based telescopes. This will ultimately strengthen our planetary defense capabilities. Saving our species and glimpsing into the cosmic past may seem like enough, but what if asteroids could boost our economy as well? In October 2023, NASA launched a probe called Psyche aboard a Falcon Heavy rocket. It's projected to reach the asteroid Psyche in August 2029. This asteroid is theoretically packed with nickel, iron, gold, and possibly other precious metals. In fact, it's believed that in today's dollars, the precious metals there are estimated to be worth 10 quintillion dollars, an unimaginable sum. Once again, we're clearly in the realm of science fiction, but maybe someday we could attach a rocket motor to Psyche and bring it home to orbit the Earth, making mining easy. The moon might look silver now, but one day we might look up and see a new baby moon, one made of gold orbiting the Earth. Obviously, further study is required. You can't strap a rocket onto an asteroid if you don't know what you're doing. In 2021, NASA launched the Lucy mission on a 12-year voyage out to explore the Trojan asteroids, a group of rocks that share Jupiter's orbit. During its journey, Lucy has already conducted a successful flyby of Dinkanesh, a twin asteroid system. Once it reaches Jupiter's orbit, Lucy will undertake a series of flybys, visiting as many Trojan asteroids as it can. Each one is a stepping stone towards future exploration. And we can use the information for feedback on how to land better, build stronger defenses, and acquire new resources.